Representative Chairman Dr. Robin Kelly, good morning. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> I've never heard it before. <laughs> now, Representative Dr. Chairman, um, let's, uh, let's start with the doctor part because this has got to just be endlessly frustrating for you as it is for a lot of us just watching, um, you know, th this Delta variant surge the, uh, clearly in uh, red states. I, I, I mean, I just... As I said, President Biden is just a, he's a good man. <laughs> so he is like thanking people, I guess, that are coming to the party late. But uh, what does this feel like for you, not just as a member of Congress, but a doctor to watch what's happened? Well, well, I'm a Ph.D. doctor. My M.D. doctor would want me to tell you that. Okay. Right yeah. off. All right. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but irregardless, just being a human being, one that's vaccinated, one that's fought so hard in Congress for people to have the ability to be vaccinated. You know, it's frustrating that some of my colleagues, some leaders have come so late to the table. But like President Biden, I'm glad they're finally, you know, around the table and encouraging people to get vaccines. And the interesting part is a lot of Trumpers don't have vaccines, but President Trump made sure he had his vaccine and all his family you know, they're all vaccinated. So I hope that, you know, people realize that. But no, it's frustrating. And, yeah. you know, then when you hear people that have COVID that said they wish they would have gotten it, they wish they would have gotten it. And, you know, that's a lot of young people, too. Yeah, I know. Mean, it's it's heartbreaking. This uh, doctor that wrote the piece about holding a 30 something year old's yeah. hand when he's about to be intubated and him begging for the vaccine and her having to say, it's, I'm sorry, it's too late. Um, right. So I. So the Biden administration is accelerating investments in COVID-19 testing to combat a fourth wave of infections washing over states and regions with low vaccination rates um, as those rates stall uh, and some people return a resist a return to mask mandates. Doesn't this just feel like a cyclical, endless nightmare? But thank God we have an administration that is addressing it, right? He's directing $106. billion in COVID testing to high-risk settings like prisons, uh, homeless, and domestic violence shelter, uh, shelters. They announced $398 million boost in funding for small rural hospitals last week for testing and reducing infection. I mean, it, you, you can't help but think, Representative, we had this kind of leadership from the beginning, right? Oh, gosh. No, we would. If we had this kind of leadership from the beginning, we would be much, much, much further along. But no matter, um, you know, what the president does, people still have to be responsible, too. People still have to make sure they're getting their vaccines. Their 12 to 15 year olds are getting their vaccines. And they're, you know, um, I know people don't want to wear masks. Neither do I, you know, but in areas where you need to wear a mask, please, please you know, wear a mask, let's, let's take precaution, because if we can all do this, then the quicker we'll be out of this. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. You you made a good point. You said we're, we're not for capturing control of the U.S. Senate and maintaining control of the House this year on the White House. There would be no child tax credit. The American Rescue Plan passed without the vote of one single Republican. Um, and it, it, that's the thing. It's like there are starting to be real benefits for real people, and it is hard to, to play politics with that, right? Definitely. And also people see elections have consequences. We've definitely <laughs> proven that actually over the last four plus whatever year, I mean, uh, whatever amount of months Biden has been in office. So that's why we've been able to um, do these things. And maybe they are partisan, you know, in D.C., but they're bipartisan across the country. And from what I'm hearing, some of my Republican colleagues who did not vote for this stuff they're going back and taking credit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's, we need it's, to keep, you know, as a Democrat, that these things are happening. Yeah, it's infuriating. So I know uh, Secretary Pete was uh, just there with you. So um, mm -hmm. I try to translate for those of us lay people. What is happening with infrastructure? Is it going to happen? Is it not? I, it's. I mean, um, I, I guess it's going to happen. But I. Wow, this sausage is really ugly, isn't it? I, I know. I, I think it's going to happen um, because. Just the idea that it is bipartisan, that shows that all kind of people want it to happen. Uh, the United States needs some help. We've been 
talking about infrastructure, infrastructure, infrastructure for years, and and we haven't come through. So everyone knows we need to come through this time. I think we are. You know, people feel more positive about it. And um, when you look at each state and what needs fixing, and then the the other thing is the attention paid to broadband and anybody that has particularly a rural area, like I, I'm urban, suburban, and rural, even though my other areas needed too, um, with the expansion of broadband, you know, uh, uh, companies are not going to look at places where there is limited broadband or no broadband in some cases. When you think about e-learning, telehealth, and things like that, we, we have to expand broadband, and that's part of the bill. Yeah, exactly. Well, let's get to the big issue that everybody's talking about is the January 6th commission. Let's take a listen to Speaker Pelosi real quick and get your take. So as the legislation allows, I did not accept two of the five people were appointed. Uh, They have made statements and taken actions uh, that I think would impact the integrity of the commission, of the committee, the work of the committee. This is deadly serious. This is about our Constitution. It's about our country. It's about assault on the Capitol that is being mischaracterized for some reason at the expense, at the expense of finding the truth for the American people. I think she did exactly the right thing, Representative Kelly, in rejecting these two uh, ridiculous picks for the January 6th commission. And she, uh, and what? what- yeah, have you heard any, I've heard speculation about her adding Adam Kinzinger. Have you heard any about that? I know she said yesterday that uh, um, she wouldn't reveal who's under consideration, but she said some have, some Republicans have expressed their interest in serving. Do you know anything more about that? I don't, but without a doubt, she did the right thing, without a doubt. I mean, I don't know that much about Banks, but I know plenty about Jordan. I've served on the same committee with him Ugh. for, I'm in my year. And he's such an obstructionist. He he yeah. does not want to hear the truth. He just wants to obstruct, obstruct, yeah. obstruct. And uh, Adam, um, he would be, I think he would be someone that would take it serious. He and I work together, you know, on various things. His district is right under mine. Um, but I haven't heard the latest. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's one person that, um, you know, that she's looking at. But, yeah. My Republican colleagues uh, know that we need to get the truth out. Uh, I, I know, as you can see in video, some of them were hiding and worried, just like McCarthy. I don't know what happened to him. Yeah. But they know, uh, you know, that's the problem. They know the truth. That's why uh, they don't want it out. Yeah. Well, I mean, and I I would have to say, I think people are really getting impatient, Representative, as to, you know, who who told all these insurrectionists where people's private offices were who ripped out the panic buttons who i mean th- this is clearly you know the, these are some of the instigators that are that are that, you know want to investigate themselves in my opinion yeah no exactly and i mean they were taken on tours the night before some offices that are definitely hidden they knew how to get right there yeah you know with that that's why staff was hiding under the table you know as one of the last people to get out of the gallery myself with the group of members. No, I want to get to the truth. I want to know who was a part of it because I believe they do not belong as a member of Congress or as a staff or whatever role they play. They they don't belong employed uh, by the federal government. Yep. Agreed. Agreed. Um, I, you know, I was thinking, we just talked about the child tax credit infrastructure, all the stuff that Democrats are doing to obviously help real people with real problems. And Somebody tweeted that you retweeted, uh, the Illinois GOP is now raising money on a platform of banning critical race theory, calling the teaching itself dangerous and racist. And you said, I see the hate caucus is at it again, exploiting racial divisions by purposely misrepresenting what critical race theory is, its intention and where it's taught. Shame on the Illinois GOP for using racism in an attempt to gain political advantage. The people of Illinois know better. Not to mention it's not taught anywhere in K through 12. It's just... They are just performance artists that that are, you know, railing about fictional issues, aren't they, at this point? Well, they're operating on fear. They, they won uh, running on fear, scaring people. I think that's what, you know, uh, President Trump represented that, uh, scaring people. This is our last chance. I'm your last hope. So th- there's uh, definitely racial uh, inferences and undertones or overtones, you know, in his statements, and I think this just further, you know, feeds into it. Yeah, 
Absolutely. And uh, you know, finally, more important, the only issue, in my opinion, you said as a black woman representing a district as diverse as America with constituents from rural, urban and suburban parts, I promise I will not sit idly by as Republicans try to roll back, roll the clock back. Join us to stop Jim Crow 2.0. Um, is there how, where are we on, um, you know, either the John Lewis Act, who I, you know, I know you and all of us revered or or the H.R. one. Are we anywhere on those two? We're, we're pressing. We're pressing. Um, the uh, Congressional Black Caucus women had and joined with other female advocates uh, yesterday. We had a press conference around it. We're not going to let our, our foot off the gas with this. And we want them to, you know, get through the hearings and we want people to be held accountable. We, but we need the public to put yep. the pressure on the Senate, you know, wherever you live. We need you to put the pressure on your senator and, you know, um, whether they're Democrat or Republican, <laughs> yep, you know, absolutely. we need that we need that pressure on. We, they yep. are trying to take people's rights to vote. Yep. And, it's and democracy. It's and only the, it's only it's only everything right now. Yeah. It is absolutely. Please give our friends some help. Right. Um, Representative Chairman, doctor, it is always a, <laughs> or in whichever order you like. It's always a pleasure. Thanks so much for taking time. Robin. For us. Uh, Robin. All right. Okay. Robin. <laughs> I see you. No, I can't. Okay, I'll see you next time. Thank, Thank you so you much, so Representative. Much.